Hi, I'm Jenny Phillips. I'm excited to give you a look inside the Simply Good and Beautiful Math K course. And if you have any questions that aren't answered in this video, leave a comment and I will answer your questions. Simply Good and Beautiful Math courses are perfect for homeschool families who want a strong academic math foundation with courses that are engaging, open and go, easy to teach, meaningful and lessons that are just the right length. Simply Good and Beautiful Math has two components. It has the math box and it has the course book, which is 253 pages long. And we'll take a look at that in a minute. First, let's look at the math box. The wooden math box is small and simple with a sliding lid. It's easy to store and it's quick to access the items that you need. So let's look at the items in the math box. First, we have these three adorable wooden cars. They have numbers on the side that are used in games in the course book, and they're used in a lot of fun different ways inside the course, which I'll go over later. We have four wooden dice. Two of them are equation dice, and two of them are number dice. And then we have counting sticks. These counting sticks are used in many different ways in the course. And I will show you some of those ways as well. The other thing that we have are two game pawns that are used in the course. Just so nice to have them right here when you need them. Okay, let's take a look at the Good and Beautiful Math K course. Every lesson starts with an opening box. And this opening box is review items that you're usually gonna do aloud with the child. And you can go ahead and um, do these items if the child doesn't have them mastered or just do them as a review or skip them if they are mastered. So in this lesson here, it says count to 40, identify the colors below, memorize a parent's phone number. Just a quick, simple thing. I'm just gonna go through a little bit of this lesson to show you how the lessons are interactive and um, use some of the items from the math box. So this says, take a counting stick from the math box. Look how quickly I was able to do that. It says, read to the child and point to the numbers. So you say, here are numbers zero and 12. So this is what the lesson is about, teaching the numbers zero and 12. Point to the zero with a counting stick. This is what you're telling the child. So the child's gonna use the counting stick to point to the number. This is zero, it means none. So then it tells the parent to hold out an empty hand and then you read, how many counting sticks do I have in my hand? Zero. How many feathers grow on your nose? Zero. We make the kids laugh. We have them interacting with the course. Then we say, use your counting stick to point to the number zero on the number line. What number does it come right before? Number one. In the yellow boxes above, tap the number 12, 12 times. So the child's gonna tap the number 12, 12 times. And then we give the child all of the counting sticks in the math box and have them count out 12 of the sticks. And then we say, cross out the boxes below that have zero clocks. And then we go here to use um, 10 sticks for another activity. And then they're gonna go ahead and do this page of addition, which is review. So um, in Math K, we have uh, the parent doing the lesson the entire time with the child. And in Math 1, 2, and Math 3, there are, is a small parent lesson and then independent work for the child. Math 4 and above is mainly student-directed. So you'll notice in these Math K courses that there's not independent sections, although they can do sections independently, like this most kids can sit there and do this independently. But the lessons are only 10 to 12 minutes long. And when your child has to also be doing handwriting and language arts and reading during the day, we have found that 10 to 12 minute math lesson is just right. The other thing that's nice about these shorter lessons um, is that you are able to do more than one lesson a day if your child is going through them faster. And that allows you to move at the pace that your child needs to move. These lessons are so very carefully designed to pack in just as much learning as uh, longer courses might do, but to do it in a shorter amount of time. So let's look at another um, lesson here. This one teaches one more, one less, and we're gonna use the theme of bunnies here. So most lessons use a theme or will have a little story, but they're short, and the focus is on the math and the concepts that you're learning 
but it's fun for the kids. So they'll go ahead and do this um, fun activity. And you can see the opening section here says, write the numbers 15, 16, 17, and 18 on the whiteboard. Watch the Days of the Week song on the Good and the Beautiful Kids channel, YouTube channel. Point to the equal sign, point to the plus sign. Again, if they know all this, you can skip it and just get right to the lesson. Uh, okay, we're going to move on here. And I'll kind of give you a flip through here so you can see some pages as I... Um, go along. We also have assessments uh, that goes after every unit and this will help you, the parent kind of know what the child might need more help with and to see what they have learned um, all throughout the course. Okay, another thing that this course does is that it incorporates faith, it incorporates God, and this is one example in this lesson. They're learning about the hundred chart, and we tell them of the story about um, Jesus that told the story about a shepherd that had a hundred sheep, and one of them wandered away, and we use that with the hundred chart. In addition, um, they're going to do activities with this. Uh, they're going to, again, get out their counting stick, and they're going to do some activities on this hundreds chart and then do these um, sheep searches. All right, so we'll go on here to another lesson. You'll notice that we have spatial activities, whole lessons that are on spatial activities, which are so fantastic for the kids. They're actually gonna do spatial activities throughout the course using their uh, wooden dice and using the counting sticks to um, copy different um, formations that makes them really um, have to think spatially as they do um, different activities. So the components in the math boxes are used in many different ways. Here is an example of a lesson that is using the car. So the child gets to use a car. We're practicing ordinal, ordinal numbers. We're reviewing ordinal numbers here. So you're gonna have the child say, drive to the fourth sign and tell me what is on it and tell me what the shape is and tell me what the color is. So our lessons uh, have a lot of review just incorporated naturally right into it because this is reviewing shapes and it's reviewing um, colors at the same time that we're working on ordinal numbers. So we teach time in level K and we do not have a clock in the math box because time is taught more heavily in math one and above. So we do have a clock in our math one box and above, but if you wanna get a clock on Amazon or something to use with your child, you can. Otherwise, all the clockwork that they need is right in the course book. We have a lot of diversity in our math courses. That was a really heavy focus for us, something we feel is so important for children. And I just wanted to show you an example of how stories are incorporated into the lessons. Not every story, not every lesson has a story. We really wanna focus on the math, but connecting it to real life. But in this um, lesson and many lessons, there's a story that runs throughout the lesson. So it says, this is Nala. She has an exciting day ahead because she gets to pick a kitten to be her new pet. She's going to visit a few places to look at kittens and then choose the best one. We're gonna follow her as she visits the kittens, but first let's learn how to tell time to the hour. And you go through this, um, this whole thing as they are practicing learning time to the hour. I'll just flip through some more pages here. So you can get an idea of what the course book looks like. This is actually the first one off the press. We do not have pattern blocks or tangrams in our math box for Math K, but we have them in higher level math boxes. But we do have some lessons where you're going to cut out some pattern blocks and do some uh, basic activities with those. But again, you can get pattern blocks easily on Amazon if you want to do more work with that um, with your child. This example here of how we use some of our manipulatives. We use the counting sticks here in our whole part part mats. You don't have to go try to dig out a mat and find it. It's just so quick. So you don't lose that child's focus while you're, while you're working on this. And then you're going to um, have hands-on. So even though there's not a ton of manipulatives, the course is actually very hands-on and very interactive. All right, I'm going to flip here to more near the end. 
So one thing you'll notice about the course is we do not have a separate calendar component. We found in our piloting that it was so much easier to have whole lessons that were on the calendar that were right in the book. They don't need to be doing it every single day. You only have so much time and we're trying to use that time as wisely as possible. So we have lessons that are about the calendar, beautiful lessons. So in this lesson, we're talking about this boy from Scotland and these things that he is doing and it's making it really come um, to life through a story about the calendar. And you're gonna find the calendar in lots of different lessons. Okay, so one thing I wanted to show you too is that there are games throughout the course where you're going to be using the game pawns or other things. So for example, here's a skating pawn game where you're going to be using your um, different pawns for different activities. And kids love games. They love hands-on things. So we have packed our courses with those things. Let me just end by showing you another couple of fun, beautiful lessons here. This is where they learn the months of the year. And again, we have our calendar work right in the course. It's so easy for you and the parent. When you are teaching multiple children math each day, it needs to be feasible and possible for you to do. And yet a beautiful, wonderful experience. So we are really excited for the Simply Good and Beautiful Math. We hope it's a blessing for your family. And again, any questions that you have, go ahead and comment below. And we are excited for you to try this course with your family. And remember that our Simply Good and Beautiful Math courses levels one through five are completely free.